everyone. In this video, I want to demonstrate just a few things that you can do with Netcat. So Netcat actually, you, there's a bunch of interesting things you can do with it, but we'll kind of keep it basic. Uh, it is a command that you can use for banner grabbing, for directly interacting, uh, just by typing in HTTP uh, verbs, you can directly interact with web servers. You can use it to transfer potentially malicious text, like maybe shell scripts. And you can even use it for reverse shells uh, if you get creative with it. But what we're going to demonstrate with Netcat is the basic syntax, how you can use it for banner grabbing, uh, HTTP requests, and also transferring basic text files. So with all that said, let's jump over to the demo machine. And as usual, we're using our existing demo environment. So this is two machines. We've got Parrot on uh, one and we've got Metasploitable on the other. Uh, first thing we'll demonstrate is just banner grabbing, which is pretty simple. You can just use the nc command followed by the IP address. And that would be 172.16.42.5 for our Metasploitable machine and 21. So that's going to be the port that we are going to banner grab. And if we just press enter, it tells us the version of VS FTPD that we're using. So it's 2.3.4. Cool. And we could do the same thing for other services. So if we did 22, it'll tell us the version of OpenSSH that we're using, which is 4.7p1, I guess. And you get the point. That's basically banner grabbing in a nutshell with Netcat. You specify NC, of course, the actual name of the command, the IP address, and the port that the service that you're interested in is going to be attached to. So that's banner grabbing. Uh, if you want to interact with HTTP servers, that's pretty straightforward as well. So we can do nc 172.16.42.5, and we'll do port 80. And nothing really happens right off the gate. But if you type in some additional HTTP kind of control information and press enter, then you will get some information back. So let's do that. We'll say head, and we'll say we want to just sort of request the the root directory or the root file here just a slash and we'll say http 1.0 let me sure we type this correctly http slash 1.0 and you press enter and nothing happens but if you press enter twice it will respond with head information so we can see that the content type is text html we see the version of PHP and the version of Apache in use on the system, which can be really useful if you want to do a penetration test. You can take that version information, plug it into a search engine, and maybe find some vulnerabilities. And in the same way, we can interact with it and maybe do a git request. So instead of just requesting header information, we could say git, and once again, we'll do http forward slash 1.0 press enter twice and now we get a response with a little bit more information so if we kind of scroll up here we do get the header information that we got with the head HTTP verb but we also get the actual content so we get the HTML uh, which you can kind of recognize here the sort of metasploitable ASCII art and also if we kind of scroll down here's the actual body of the the site with the links to the various sort of sub uh, web applications. So just links to DVWA, Mutilidae and so forth. And if we open this in, in Firefox, you know, this is what we get. We actually get it nicely formatted, right? Cause we're opening it with a browser. So same information, but you can just get that directly through NC. So that's a way that you can use NC to directly interact with web servers. And the last thing I actually want to demonstrate is sending and receiving files using NC. So there may be times where you need to be creative, especially as a pen tester, about getting a shell script from A to B. And NC is one way that you might do that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll actually hop over to the Metasploitable box. And I apologize, it's a little small. So I'll read out the commands that I'm typing. Uh, what we want to do is, of course, use the NC command. And we're gonna use three flags. We're gonna listen, we're gonna have verbose information, and we're going to listen on a particular local port. So that's LVP, that, that's what those three uh, flags specify. And we're gonna listen on port 8081, 
And specifically, we want to take any information that we get on port 8081, sort of the raw text that's being transmitted over TCP, and store it into bad stuff underscore rx.txt. So this is the bad stuff that we're receiving. And when we press enter here on Metasploitable, it's gonna start listening on port 8081. And it's just gonna sit there patiently until it receives something to pipe into that file. So over here on our Parrot OS box, we can say, all right, well, let's actually send some information over. So we'll say in that cap, uh, 172.16.42.5 and port 8081, which is what Netcat is listening on over on the other virtual machine. And let's pipe in bad stuff TX. So this is just a text file with some nonsense in it really, but it could be a shell script or something a little bit more malicious. So we will transmit that over to the uh, recipient device. And by pressing enter here, it's going to, we'll give it a little bit of time and then we'll control C. Uh, and then over here on the Metasploitable machine, it should be reflected once that's done. So I feel like that's more than enough time. So we'll control C uh, over here. And here on the Metasploitable machine, we can see, all right, yeah, so we got a, a connection. You can see, if, you can, if you've got like a microscope, you might be able to read this. We've got a connection from the uh, Parrot OS machine. And if everything worked properly, we should actually be able to read the contents of that text file, which we redirected into badstuffrx. So badstuffrx.txt, press enter. And it says, uh-oh, malicious code hijinks. So is that what we sent? Well, spoiler alert, it is what we sent. So if we look at bad stuff TX, the transmitted text, it's uh-oh, malicious code hijinks. So that's how you can kind of uh, somewhat uh, sneak, I don't know, text around, uh, shell scripts around without using other tools. Uh, one thing that I like to recommend for a lot of these commands, nmap, um, netcat, is rtfm. And there's just a lot of little useful bits of information here. Uh, so for instance, there's a page on netcat in this manual, and it allows you, or it will tell you how to, uh, for instance, set up other things. So not just sending and receiving files, but there are commands here for establishing remote shells. So that might be worth looking into. Uh, we won't demonstrate that here just for time reasons, but you can, using a search engine or maybe getting this book, you can play around with kind of fun, more fun things, like the ability to do remote shells, re reverse shells, and so forth. So NCAT, very full featured. It allows you to kind of interact directly over kind of a TCP connection frequently to some service and that might be something as simple as banner grabbing as somewhat more complicated, something like um, interacting with web servers just directly using HTTP verbs or even transferring files and providing remote shells. So it's a pretty cool command, one that uh, is definitely worth having in your tool belt. So thanks for joining me for this part and I will see you in the next one.